Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel. I'm a migraine strategist, chronic daily migraine survivor, and I'm the founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation. I'm really excited because I am here today with Dr. Rachel Coleman. Rachel is an assistant professor in the Department of Neurology at Mount Sinai School of Medicine, and she is here to talk to us about caffeine. I think that we all get a little confused about caffeine uh, when we have migraine. Uh, does it help us? Does it hurt us? Uh, we hear all, all sorts of stories. So let's talk about that really quick. Um, Dr. Coleman, thank you for being here today. How are you? Doing well. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're very excited. So usually when people receive a list of foods to avoid, because of their migraine disorder, caffeine is on that list. It's often one of the first things. Uh, can you tell us why that is? Sure. So, you know, there are many foods that can trigger migraine. So people know about the big ones, caffeine, chocolate, alcohol, um, and food triggers migraines from a various different direction. Caffeine is actually much more complicated than just triggering migraine from the food to brain connection. Caffeine's really an interesting drug. It works on the brain. It hits a receptor in the brain called the adenosine receptor and kind of blocks it. Now, adenosine's role in the brain is very complicated. It helps us be awake, and that's why caffeine alerts you. Um, it helps, it interacts with your mood, and it also has a role in pain. So it's interesting, both increasing and stopping adenosine actually can give you pain benefits, reducing your pain. Adenosine in some ways could be good for you and reduce your pain. Caffeine is a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. We know that too much caffeine for most people will trigger more headaches. There's a phenomenon that's called medication overuse headache, where people with migraine are prone to get more headaches when they use increasing and increasing dose of pain medication, mm -hmm. because caffeine has that effect on the brain to lower the pain level, high doses of caffeine used really frequently can lead to more headache. Right. So both in a little bit of use on occasion and in higher doses, you can end up with more migraine because of your caffeine use. People always ask me, well, what's a safe amount of caffeine? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk a little bit more later about that. But in general, less than two cups per day is what we recommend to most people. And those are two small cups. People tend to really use really large cups. You really have to stick to two, two small cups of coffee, which is about 200 milligrams. Okay. So uh, another sort of ironic thing about coffee uh, is that when you stop drinking it, if you drink a lot of it, you can get uh, caffeine withdrawal headaches. You can start to feel worse. So let's talk to the people who are going to try to decrease their caffeine intake and they don't want to make their headaches worse. What do you recommend they do? Yeah, so this is a double-edged sword of caffeine. Caffeine can trigger a migraine, can help a migraine, can give you medication overuse headache. And if you stop using it, you can get a caffeine withdrawal headache, which is actually a different kind of headache. For people who have migraine, that caffeine withdrawal headache will feel very much like a migraine. Mm -hmm. For people who don't actually have migraine, that caffeine withdrawal headache can help them understand what their migraine or brothers and sisters feel like. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta be really careful. If you have a steady high amount of caffeine, and then you stop drinking it. Generally, a little bit less than 24 to 48 hours later, somewhere in that time frame, you're gonna get a horrible headache. Mm. If you have even like 100 milligrams of caffeine, soon after that, within an hour, you'll start to feel better, mm. which is why people continue and continue to use the caffeine. In order to avoid the caffeine overuse headache and the caffeine withdrawal headache, best to cut down. So I tell my patients to just Cut down slowly. Slowly reduce the amount of caffeine that you have. Don't ever go from three cups to no cups or three cups to one cup. I tell people if they really enjoy the caffeine experience to get some decaf and start to switch out half their coffee for decaf. So if you normally have two large cups of coffee a day, then continue to have your large cup in the morning and your second dose make it a half decaf. 
Mm. After a week or so, reduce it to reduce it again. And you certainly could go a little faster every few days, but the slower you go, the more your body's going to get used to those changes. The more your body's going to get used to not having that much caffeine, the less your body's going to desire it. Actually, the more alert you're going to feel overall because you don't need that drug to get you awake. So right. slow and steady wins the race here. And that's what I tell all my patients. Be cautious and careful. Go slow and, and you'll succeed. Okay, so I feel like this is a big question because I have so many people, I would even say um, this is a trick a lot of teenagers do. Um, I have so many people who uh, feel they can abort an ongoing migraine with caffeine, for example, with a Coke, or I know that I, I know teenagers who will go get a, um, a Coke Slurpee because of the mixture of the cold and the Coke, the caffeine, et cetera. They feel it's something that helps them get through their school day if they feel a migraine coming on. Is this something you hear a lot, people doing this? Absolutely. You hear it a lot and the research and evidence supports that it actually works. Okay. You know, using a combination of a medication that's anti-pain with a little bit of caffeine will make you feel better. The medication as well as the caffeine, so separately or together, will help your brain have less headache. Okay. The problem is, what do you do when you have high frequency headache? When you have high frequency headache, this is not the best choice for you because while it may help you, you're just gonna push closer and closer into medication overuse headache. So it's everything in moderation and each person really differently need to know what to do. If you're someone who has one to three migraine days a month, I think grabbing the Coke in your medication or, 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 or a Coke Slurpee is a great idea. Mm -hmm. If you're someone who has on average more than one headache day a week, then you have to be really careful and just talk with your doctor about the various options because you never want to do something that does help but then hurt you. So you got to be really, really careful. Okay. All right. Well, I think that that was super important. So it's, it's a short message, but it's a message that's so pertinent to all of us. Uh, and everyone's so curious. And I don't think many people talk about uh, how a lot of people go straight to Coke to avoid it. And does it work or doesn't it? And when should we avoid it? And not people really bring up the pathway with the adenosine receptor. I think a lot of people are like, okay, you want me to stop drinking coffee, but why? So I think this was a hugely important message. Is there anything else you would like to add to our uh, information on caffeine and migraine and headache today? Sure. You know, it's been discussed so much about caffeine and we just haven't had as much research data. And really in the last year, a couple of papers have really come up to help us to understand this better. You know, one of the things that I've been counseling my patients in the last few months is this paper that came out in August. It actually showed this nonlinear progressive relationship. So if you had a small amount of caffeine every single day versus having a larger amount, those who had three or more cups of coffee a day were more likely on each day to get a headache. Mm -hmm. So it really kind of tells you that, you know, you got to be cautious and careful. And I counsel all my patients now, whatever level of caffeine you usually have, it's probably worthwhile to try and cut down a little. You might notice that you're going to overarchingly have a less frequent headache. I can share from my personal experience. I have migraines. And as a headache specialist, I thought I had it under control. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew what I was doing and I thought I understood all the data about caffeine. So I was really proud of myself and my reduction to one cup of coffee a day. Mm -hmm. I had a really stable headache frequency and I was pleased. Other reasons I decided to cut coffee out of my life. I actually went from having on average five headaches a day to five, sorry, that would've been terrible. <laughs> For everyone who has a daily headache, I'm sorry, yeah. five headache days a month, I went down to an average of having one or two a month, and the only change was the reduction of caffeine. Mm -hmm. And it must be that my brain is just a little bit more sensitive, and anything you know more than a cup of coffee a day really was a problem for me. So everyone should really play around with their sensitivities. And what I also find is often people say, well, I cut out coffee for a week and nothing changed. If you are a caffeine overuser, so you're using on average more than two cups a day, you really need to cut out caffeine for two to weeks to at least two months to know because it can take that long 
for your brain to stop the negative hormonal signaling pathways that are desiring that caffeine and increasing your coffee. So unfortunately, quick fixes and quick lifestyle changes don't work. You do have to spend a little more time and it is worthwhile. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That was a great episode. I loved it. I think everyone else is going to love it. Thank you for joining us and thank you everyone else for joining us and come see us again next week for our next episode of Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation.